last week. Well, there's a bit to unpack. Whale has found a couple for us. What are they? Find out soon. The big talking points, the rankings, who's up and who's out. Jason Lee chats Kiang Zahara and we preview this week's harness racing action. Uh, good evening and welcome to the box seat. Yes, it is the big talking points in many ways. The Canterbury Classic and where does it sit in terms of the cup rankings? And is three too many? We've got Greg O'Connor and Michael Guerin on the show to chat about that later on. Looking forward to the chat with Jason Lee regarding Kiang Zahara, the unbeaten Australian filly by Volstead aside doing wonderful things across both sides of the Tasman. As I said, Greg, a bit to unpack. Yeah, absolutely it is, uh, Matthew. Really looking forward to getting into the Canterbury Classic, talking about that, and more importantly, what's happened as a result, because the rankings are out and you get to see them first here. OK, looking forward to that. Before we look forward, though, let's look back on the week that was. Tech McLeod went bush in the Canterbury Classic. He's going to the Cup. It's Tech McLeod. The IRT New Zealand Trotting Cup just became a whole lot more real. I'm quite emotional, actually. You know, I never thought it would ever happen. Wagstar, he opens up by a dozen, he opens up by 15, he might even get him by 20. Wagstar at the 150 metres, he's a pretty special horse all right. Wagstar, what a stunning win. But it's a 50 pad at the 50, four from four, and a rising star in the juvenile trotting ranks, a 50 pad by a length and a half. Harrison John has gone straight on by. Harrison John at the 100, leads by two. We walk by faith. Hadron Collider, Renegade out now, but it's too late. It's Harrison John for the Lazarus Stakes. Burning Love's going to be too classy for them. Burning Love wins by four length. Fiery Bandito, they can't get him. Fiery Bandito, the Southerners again. Princess Meritaten hit the front. Late Burnley Blackbird. It's Princess Meritaten first up, though. Duchess Megs, it's away three, four lengths. Zachary sitting very quietly. And the Sweet Lou filly will blow them away, and she nearly dips under two minutes as well. Favourite off Ooh. the unruly at $1.35, and that was him getting it wrong. He tried to run out the gate and go back to the stables. No fella, you've got 1700 metres in front of you and a bit to do. Meant to be Zachary's nursing him here. Cyclone Sally, you never know on the outside. Meant to be down to the line. He's big and powerful. He's still got a few things to learn, but good effort all the same. But here comes New Zealand for maybe Call Me The Breeze. He's bolted in. But it's all Major Moth. He's going to lead most of the way and win the Jet Roof in Kilmore Cup. And it's Kiang Zahara staring down the barrel of seven from seven. And she's roaring away, Kiang Zahara. Wins unextended. Leap to fame, darted away. The finest four legs in Aussie harness racing coming clear. Leap to fame is back. It's win 42. Leap to fame, bolted in. Boy, oh boy, that is some sort of highlight reel from across both sides of the Tasman, capping it off with the horse that we're all looking forward to most, coming to the Addington Raceway for the IRT New Zealand Trotting Cup, Leap to Fame, who will be lining up this week, of course. Let's touch base, though, with the Canterbury Classic from Friday night, a full field assembled at the 2,600 metre starting point. The winner... Greg got it wrong at the start and it was almost game over. Yeah, it wasn't the only one. Matthew, obviously Beach Ball getting it wrong. BD Joe, a couple of strides after the start, got it wrong again. Both of those horses now in trouble in terms of gaining a start. He did settle very quickly though, didn't he? Tack McLeod. The big winners at the start though, Franco Marek and Alta Meteor essentially got themselves in very good positions and were able to dart home and find their way into the IRT New Zealand Cup. Here they come turning for home. Favourite Republican Party. He'd done plenty of work. Coming off his back is Tack McLeod. Good runs in behind Charlie Brown. A little bit unlucky again. Mawanga a nice run. Who's Delight had his chance, but 
It was the colours that have been made famous by the TAC name getting the job done. First three home all in the cup. Republican Party, I think you can be just slightly forgiving of him. 152.5 on the ultimate race book, 54.6. 27.5 on the way home, but he's a big, brutal son of Sweet Lou, is Tact McLeods and Trevor Proctor. He's heading to the cup. Well, Trevor, congratulations. You have a runner now in the IRT New Zealand Cup. Massive thrill. Absolutely massive. Um, I'm quite emotional, actually. You know, never thought it would ever happen. And uh, he, he's taken us on a good trip, you know. Really exciting. Very exciting stuff. He's a horse that you've travelled up here to Marks a couple of times now. Yeah, absolutely. I'm a great believer in not travelling a horse too much, you know, especially a good horse. Uh, let him settle in and uh, get used to the situation, and you know, and um, that's my belief. And it's with this horse, it's worked a treat. So it's great. Well, congratulations, Sam. The speed was always going to be on there, and got a nice run just tucked in behind them, and then the gap opened up just at the right time for him. Yeah, um, like you say, the, the speed was on the whole way, which really suited, and, and we were lucky enough to lob not a bad spot early. And um, yeah, I sort of knew around the bend he was travelling that it was just a matter of getting those splits at the right time. And um, yeah, he certainly, certainly let down great. He's a really nice horse. He obviously has uh, come up and he's been at Overport Lodge uh, for a wee while. What have you made of him? Yeah, like you say, um, in a short career to date, he's um, shown that he is a nice horse and, he, and he's got a good future. But, um, yeah, I've been lucky enough, obviously, to drive him that at home and track work. And um, with Johnny, obviously, ha having other commitments tonight, I was fortunate enough to get the drive, which is great of them. Um, you know, they could have put anyone on. I thought Mark might have driven him himself even. But, um, yeah, like, I'm just a lucky one that got to see him tonight, really, and pleased I could get the job done for everyone. Johnny, he was positively driven, and now he's got a spot in the cup. Yeah, he's earned his spot and um, hopefully there's a bit more improvement in him too. So, yeah, he went a good race and, um, yeah, as we go on, hopefully he just keeps taking those steps. John Dunn, Charlie Brown. Yeah, I thought he went great. He stepped away really good, ended up uh, three fence and then got one further back, but had to cross hills halfway down and get out and get as close to third as I could. Uh, super effort. There were still some decent runs in behind. I thought Mohongo got home quite nicely from his barrier draw. The big question mark horses, though, Greg, with their manners are Beach Ball, BD Joel. I, I think we can be a wee bit forgiving of Beach Ball. Big Colt, fresh out. I reckon Kevin Chapman will fire the work into him now and we'll see an improved version of him. But BD Joe, patience wearing thin with punters and the cup rankings. We get a chance to have a look at the Meffin Cup later on, and he obviously is going around in that. Where does Beach Ball go next? Because there's two uh, handicap races here on the 11th at Addington and the 18th between then and, of course, uh, the Ashburton Flying Stakes. So, yeah, it's an interesting time for connections. Been a few good horses wear those colours of Tack McLeod. Oh, yeah. Uh, Tack Lizzie, uh, Tack Tate, who ended up going to Australia and uh, going some t tremendous times over there. And it all goes all the way back to Tack Tile, who back in the 50s won about four derbies, I believe. Yeah, great to see the emotion there from Trevor Proctor post-race as well. Looking forward to the IRT New Zealand Trotting Cup with those first three home. Well, Habibti Pat, she just keeps winning for Greg and Nina Hope. The Magsales and Leah Orange in the bike. Look, she gave us a bit of a heart attack last start, Greg, but really, she was never in doubt here. No, she's a lovely trotter, isn't she? Once she found the front and Blair just took luck out of play... It was essentially race over. Um, very good run from the second horse. Spoke to Phil Williamson about her today. Of course, the full sister to Empire City. He said there'll be a bit of improvement in her too. I think there's a race for her in about three weeks' time here at Addington. Uh, it's a size stakes heat, I believe. So she's gone great. Uh, but on Habibdi Pat, she's the top of the pops at the moment. Good to see Queen Kaizen getting back to something like her best form. Yeah, she got home nicely. You'd think naturally Atlantic City's got to be the big improver after sitting in behind the leader. Beautifully bred, of course, but Habibti Pat, she's bred to be very, very good. She was driven good and she's trained to perfection. We'll hear from the Connections post the two-year-old feature. She's continuing to make statements and she's done it with the hood on this time. Yeah, no, that's right. Yeah, she's, we've had a little bit of trouble with her blood and um, she's worked good all the way through, but we've sort of been monitoring her blood and her, her blood had improved a lot from last week. So, um, yeah, it probably showed it today. She was probably a bit better horse for her. Well, yep, she's continuing to make these statements. She strolled to the front and was able to get it her own way. So what's happening for her now? 
Uh, she's going to have a fresher now, and she'll come back on show day for the big race. She'll probably miss the $45,000 race, the Phillies race, at the end of October. I think we'll just uh, give her a bit of a fresh and then she's got a couple of hundred thousand dollar races uh, later in the season. Congratulations, Greg. Well done. Great. Thank you very much. That was a really nice debut from her, and she got a really nice trip. She did, yeah. She drew well and um, was able to get to the pegs and uh, finish off really nicely. Look, she'll be looking to emulate uh, what her relation's done already so far. That would be nice to think, yeah, that's certainly the goal, but um, yeah, well, fingers crossed. John, Queen Kaizen. Yeah, really good run, um, improving every time this time in, so um, yeah, still hitting the line and uh, just it'll be good if she keeps that form up in all these races to come anyway. Yes, she has kept improving Queen Kaizen, getting home brilliantly in that most recent effort. There was some smart two-year-old trotters head around at Alexandra Park, which we'll talk about a little later on in the show. Well, the Canprint Lazarus Stakes, a field of three-year-olds were assembled. I couldn't have them from the draw, Greg, but Harrison John has earned every little bit of this. Yeah, outstanding drive from uh, John Dunn. Wanted to get around on the speed, and right here you thought, yeah, we walk by faith, done a bit of work, he's put the pressure on, where's the swoopers? Well, they weren't coming. He was just too strong and too powerful for them. He's not a big horse, by always be Mickey, out of Rizalski. When Michael comes on a little bit later on, he could talk about her. He had a bit to do with her. Renegade charged home. We walked by faith, battled on pretty solidly too. Hadron Collider was good first up. Yeah, well, considering we walked by faith as burnt early and beat, only beaten a length and a half, I think we can sort of have some confidence that Hayden Cullen left some improvement there. It's here from John Dunn. Yeah, it wasn't an ideal draw to uh, start the race, but um, they backed up. They went quite hard early, some of them. They backed off the tempo. Uh, some of them got hit by this horse. He hasn't raced for like, about four weeks now, so uh, Power Yak at, yeah, at home, and he uh, could have a... So I had a uh, block for Sam Otley three wide to do some work, but I sort of took my chances, and, uh, yeah, at the end he sort of got a wee bit tied the last hundred, but he's entitled to. Ricky Renegade, he's gone massive. Yeah, and no, I really rap with him. Um, it's the first time he's had a decent draw, to be fair, and I thought I'd. Um, it's the first time he's ever gone out of the gate, and I had a um, big mind on leading, but I sort of got attacked that hard early. I had to take a trail, and then he was probably a bit unlucky after that. Bob, we walked by faith. How did he feel out there? Yeah, he felt super, and uh, super run first up, you know. Um, did all the donkey work, or Johnny could come around, he did plenty of toes. Fair, fair play to him, but um, fresh up. Um, no, I couldn't be happy. He was sort of starting to get the stitch sort of at the top of the straight, but um, what I liked about him, he just kept trying to the line. So, no, nah, wrap with that. Matty, Hadron Collider? Yeah, he went really well. We uh, got a nice run, but, uh, yeah, he's probably feeling at the last 150 being first up, but he went a good race. Good to bear in mind, Greg, as I said prior to going to those interviews with a horse like We Walk By Faith, they're not trained to be at their peak first up, so he's definitely going to get better, as are many of the others. Yeah, obviously, Matthew, with uh, the velocity not too far away, We Walk By Faith's connections do have a slot, uh, and then you've got horses like Harris and John, they don't, so they'll be looking to get a slot. A um, few others there, Renegade. You wouldn't mind having him if you if you were looking for one. Mickey's Courage. You know, it's tough. There's a, there's a few there that might slip into that race and obviously have the derby uh, further down the field. And, and Friday week, we have a $100,000 three-year-old race. Yeah, Brick and Farms breeding the Quinella there in our three-year-old feature. Well, if you want to see a special horse, have a look at this boy go. I haven't seen too many win like this, Greg. Wag star. He's sort of already in the conversation having won like this a year ago, but... Just phenomenal. Yeah, nearly a year ago to the day, he went a similar time, one by ten lengths. He did it even more impressively last Friday. I spoke to Craig Ferguson about the way Mark drove him, and as he said, Plugsillen never just let him do it under his own steam, never really chased him along, and he has absolutely whopped them here. Yes, he's got a nomination for the Cup. I don't expect him to be in there. He doesn't really want him to be in there. But whatever races he is in, he's going to be a force to be reckoned with. Yeah, some nice four-year-old races in there. There's a $200,000 new race for four-year-olds only on the 6th of December, and he can definitely be there. Mac Da Vinci, uh, his other horse, Da Vinci, can be in there as well. He's a four-year-old too. So, yeah, there might be a few sort of 
aiming at that. Where's the ceiling, I guess, is the question mark for Horsake. Well, Hakan. he hasn't got anywhere near it yet, I don't think. He's just that good when he's rolling in front like that. What about the night for Sweet Lou? He had a great night, didn't he? He can step too from a stand, so that's obviously going to give them confidence going forward. Mighty Louie getting home nicely too. Uh, I think there's another one in him in, in the right sort of race. And uh, Jimmy James Maguire will be worth following. He placed Smith and Cup this time last year. Yes, he, he did. Jimmy James. And he's a pretty fair horse, Jimmy mm. James Maguire. He's one to follow. And he won at Kaikoura as well. Speaking of nice horses from the South, Fiery Bandido capped off what was a great week for Kirsten Green, Greg. And I think there's just an ounce of improvement there with him too. She couldn't quite ask him for the ultimate effort up the straight. So if she can get him spot on, he's a really promising trial. He's a bit untapped, and as we found out, Tom Kilkelly won number 200 as an owner, so a pretty special night. But she doesn't bring them up very often, and when she does, you know that they're good enough to run, and this one's clearly... Uh, going to continue to go forward. I thought Zoltan Boschik, who's only in this grade for the first time, Confession will be very hard to beat this week. Storm and home wide out. Confessional meets Zoltan Boschik 10 metres better off in the race that they compete at Addington on Friday. So on that margin there, you'd have to think that Confessional is going to be pretty hard to beat. But yes, Kirsten Green is certainly having a grand run of things as we saw her horse, of course, win down at Gore as well. Duchess Megs at Alexandra Park. Here's a question for you. Is she the benchmark? Is she the Absolutely best? Absolutely she is. Uh, By home, how far? Oh, we way. She gets home at 53.8 mm. here and is absolutely low flying. I know Ultimate Racing Girls are handy, Philly. We, we know that. And the second horse is as well. But she is next level. We saw it last December here at Addington Raceway. Look at that. 53.8, 26.8. And Zachary is fair dinkum just sitting there. I can't wait to see her back here at Addington because she'll love the big track. Classic Elegance was excellent in second. Nice filly. She's typical of good mares, good fillies. They're built like cults. I know we've often heard jockeys over in Australia talk about those good horses having that extra chromosome and just bulking them up, and I think she's in that category. Very fast last half and a pretty cold night, so that was a great a great performance. Brilliant. She just keeps stepping up, doesn't she? Yeah. Yeah, well, she's obviously improved from the first run, and... Uh, Zach thought she was really strong late at last night under. He said she was just running down the back and wanted to wanted to do it. Yeah. Another great run from your Mia. You must be delighted considering the time that they've run. She's gone super. Yeah, she has gone super, Nicole. We're very happy with that run tonight. You know, I expected a good run and she delivered, so we're real happy with that. She really puts in, doesn't she? Oh yeah, she's you know, she tries really hard and that's you know, part of the battle with horses, so she's a lovely mare to have around. And obviously what was David's thoughts on the run? You know, how did she feel out there? Yeah, no, David said she felt good, you know, and they were really licking home pretty quick. So, you know, for her to run home like she did, we were happy all around. An ultimate racy girl, another nice effort as well and improving as well, second up. Yeah, yeah, I was a bit sort of going across the top I thought well she should really be keeping up but I hadn't realised how quick they were running but um, uh, yeah she, she just want to get a little bit better I think from now on I'll tell you one bloke who'll be looking forward to jumping on that tin budgie and coming south Zachary Butcher how about the book that he's going to have over Cole couple Chisel, weeks? Merlin Duchess Megs it me oh, oh man. my it's, uh, it's a great book uh, I wrote down in my race book on Friday night before that 280 so she actually got out to 280 now into $2.30 uh, All You Need Is Me goes around this week, as does Treacherous Love. Uh, but she is absolutely numero uno at the moment. Yep, for sure. And I think quite easily at the moment, she's got to be the, the horse that they all have to beat. We'll stick with Alexander Park. This horse almost made it hard for himself, meant to be galloping in the score up. Yeah, had to wander out towards the stabling area before the start as they were trying to score up. Caught them up and just went round and won. I'm not sure what he's beating here meant to be, but you can only win, and that's exactly what he's doing. Uh, I think he's a horse that will really appreciate coming to Addington. Um, he holds him pretty comfortably here, and, yeah, look, you just know there's got to be an enormous amount of improvement in him. He's beautifully bred by Father Patrick out of Luby Lou. I think his gait is naturally a two-year-old gait, but I'm just not quite sure that the... The body and the frame is a, a natural two-year-old. He just looks as though that another 12 months under his belt... He's going to be a cracking individual. You just see underneath of the hood there, the ears just start twitching short of the post. So I think that there might just be a little bit more to well, come Well, Mum was him. very good. Oh, and she was very good. She'd be one of the best trotting fillies I think I've ever seen. That yeah. horse. We I think she won a group one at her second start. So. Derby, was it? Yeah, it was. Yeah, beat yeah. the boys in the Derby. Mm.
Well, we look forward to the Australians coming over and Call Me The Breeze will be one of those, Greg. We saw him taking out the Kilmore Trotters Cup over the week, beating one overall who's likely to come as well. Yeah, look, he's really good, Call Me The Breeze. Spoke to Andy Gath on radio on Sunday and he said, look, I've inherited a very good horse here. He was a good horse before I got him. He's won 1.7 million, but he was simply outstanding here. Sitting parked over the longer journey. They wanted to try him out from a stand. He handled that beautifully. RC Phoenix was OK. It's him battling into fourth, and you mentioned one overall who is likely to come for the Renwick Farms Dominion too, but he's an awesome performer. We've seen him here before, can't wait to see him at Addington. Yeah, 3,200 metres, has, has Andy got a bit of confidence around and that? He has, he said he just keeps going, and he has won a Row Cup with La Cucaracha, he has not won a Dominion, and he still called it the Dominion Handicap, so that's uh, you know a bit of history going back there, he wants to, uh, to win that race. Here's the Kilmer Pacing Cup though, Matthew, and Major Moth, District Attorney, Better Eclipse, first, second and third, all three coming to the IRT New Zealand Cup, spoke to Jason Grimson today, he said, I want to bring both of these boys, I can't quite believe they're outside the rankings, we'll get to those very shortly, uh, but Major Moth has won and won very comfortably here. That was a Group 2 Kilmore Cup, we're going to take you to Queensland now and the return of the tour course leap to fame he was given a bit of a freshen up by Grant and Trista Dixon and he came back Greg and he did this over the weekend yeah he went very close to his own track record and he did it in leap to fame style sitting alongside sitting park very comfortable Grant barely moves here. It was pretty wet conditions as well. Often the Albion Park track can improve when it is like that, but 51-2 uh, first up, uh, he is, is something to behold. I really can't wait till he gets here, and I, I really hope that it does unfold because I want everyone in New Zealand to see him. I've been lucky enough to see him multiple times now, and he's just an absolute gem. So is, is it a hit-and-run mission? Are they thinking what sort of stage are they going to come over? Uh, fly over on the 30th, which is Kaikoura's first day, the Sunday. Very good chance he'll be at the Cup trial okay. uh, three days later. Either that or he'll have a, come and have a look at Addington for sure. He'll be staying at Stonewall. Um, Everything looks online at the moment. Victoria Cup for him next week. So, uh, yep, he goes round to the smoking up this week. Well, Craig Thompson is one of New Zealand's biggest harness racing fans. I'm sure that you're looking forward to seeing him in the flesh as well. Evening to you. Yeah, evening, boys. Really am. I mean, he's uh, going to make the race trans Tasman rival. That, rivalry. That, that's what we like to see. And he was dominant there at uh, obviously at Albion Park. I tell you what caught my eye last week, boys, was. A training performance uh, from a horse that was off the scene for 17 months. And it was only a timber on a Sunday afternoon. But I thought the training performance of Warren Stapleton to get uh, Wild Willow first up after a long break. Hidden race since April 2023. And Ricky May, he got round outside Cormac Leo at the, about the 800 metre mark and put it to him. And he's a big boy. He's obviously had a few issues because uh, it's been, as I say, 70 months, 70 months between races. He had a trial, I think, with Greg and Nina Hope, and Warren's, Warren's done a wonderful job to get him up. He's, he's a big, lanky bloke, and he had to start number five and win number three. Um, he's got a bit of a future. Of course, he won at Kaikoura on that tight track uh, back at the end of October 2022, so he's a nice horse, whether he can hold together and uh, keep going. Be very interesting to see what happens, but for Ricky May and for Warren, well done, because that's a big effort first up after 17 months. Catch and release this week. We've just got a catch this week, boys, and it's a, a Lazarus. Boy, an impressive son of Lazarus at the trials last week called the Lazarus Effect. Now, he's trained by Bob Butt. This was good. 229. He was about eight seconds under qualifying time. He comes three wide in the black colours. He's in the Alabar colours. Runs home at 56.1. Last mile, 158, and he runs past him. He goes to Eddington in the first race on Thursday evening. The Lazarus doing a good job. We saw Jeremiah win at Auckland last week. The oldest cropper, only three-year-olds. His granddam was a pretty good mare. She won five races and left the Dorchester, who set a New Zealand record at Ashburton. So he's got a bit of a pedigree, and I reckon he goes OK. So he gets barrier one on Thursday, mate. be interesting to see how he goes, but I think he'll be pretty short in the market. It's going to be a massive week ahead. Of course, I'm looking forward to the Holmes DG on Friday night. Of course, Old Town Road, he won it last year off a handicap. Uh, Merlin's back, second favourite for the cup behind Leap to Fame, and he's opened up at 225, guys. I think that's a pretty fair price. Well, we've got the Methven Punters Club on Sunday. Is the big fish making an appearance? 
Well, he was. Uh, my son's actually playing league on Sunday, Matt, so I have kind of didn't want to really push the boundaries too much. Um, he's playing in a pretty serious game. But, yeah, I'll be thinking of the boys down there, the Brown Pub uh, Miffin Punter of the Year competition, and uh, good luck if you take an entry. Good on your way. We'll catch you next week, and uh, we'll have him with his catch and release segment. Obviously, nothing going quite bad enough for him to be putting in the bin this week, Greg, but that's OK. Nothing wrong with that. No, no. I'd rather he did that and um, you give us a winner, and I, and I think he's right with the Lazarus effect. Looks pretty progressive. OK, Cup rankings. Time to chat. First of all, let's have a look at the New Zealand Cup rankings, the IRT New Zealand Trotting Cup. Greg, what has happened? over the last seven days. Well, as you can see in the green, they're the movers. Tack McLeod, Franco Merrick, Ulta Media, one, two, three in the Canterbury Classic. They are now in. Uh, Merlin, he drifts out three spots, as do many of them, as a result of those three going up. Major Moth is a big mover, 28 into 15th after him winning the Kilmore Cup. Uh, Beach Ball shifts out, as do a few others. District Attorney comes in one spot after finishing second. Speak the Truth, I believe, will be gone anyway. McAndrew Aviator drifts out. Charlie Brown comes up one spot off the back of his fourth placing in the Canterbury Classic. This field is really shaking down. It's going to take something significant from now a horse like Old Town Road, uh, who is likely to have to go to the Ashburton Flying Stakes and finish in the first couple. But looking forward to talking to Michael about... The way the rankings are falling out and how the Canterbury Classic offers three guaranteed spots, Matthew, six and a half weeks out from the big race. All right, Michael, you've heard our chat pre the rankings as we welcome you into the show. Yeah, evening, Matt. Big hi to everybody watching at home and hi to you too, Grego. Uh, look, I loved the Canterbury Classic. I thought it was a great betting race and a wonderful result, I think. Part of the romance of the New Zealand Cup are horses from smaller stables getting in, even though Trevor Proctor is sharing the training with Mark Jones. But Matt, we've got to ask the question, is it really fear on the connections of open class horses that the first three in that race get in? Because what we're starting to get ourselves into a situation now is, is that running third in the Canterbury Classic could actually be more valuable because it's a guaranteed spot than winning the Kaikoura Cup or winning the Methman Cup or winning, for example, the Holmes DG coming up this weekend. We've got so many horses who are guaranteed to start through different reasons. They have won into Dominions and obviously defending cup champions, all those sort of horses. Better Eclipse winning the Auckland Cup. I get that. But at the moment, we're saying running third and I'm not picking on the first two from the small stable. I'll go to the big stable and pick on them. Running third in the Canterbury Classic gives you more right to be in this race than American me, who won a Group 1 last year. That doesn't make any sense. No, it's a real uh, challenge, Michael, isn't it? And we'll put the rankings back up just to bring people in here. And what you're talking about is the fact that basically there are a dozen spots, if you like, already gone. American Me is a good example. Group 1 winner of the Invercargill Cup. Uh, obviously won uh, the Roy Purden as well. But you go down through Merlin. Mark Shard, two-time Group 1 winner uh, last uh, earlier in the, in the year rather. Don't Stop Dreaming, obviously a Group 1 performer. Republican Party, American Me, sooner the better, second in the Miracle Mile. Uh, once you get to there, I think Rock and Roll do's in, in a, a power of pain. Michael, he hasn't been seen, he hasn't been good at the trials. Beach ball needs to step away. Major Moth obviously goes to the Victoria Cup, although Jason Grimson suggesting both Major Moth and District Attorney Michael might go to Kaikoura on their way to the Cup, hopefully. Well, Greg, the odd thing about that is, is that it may not matter because we have so many horses who are now guaranteed to be in the Cup and Merlin has to be there and Mark Shard has to be there and Don't Stop Dreaming, they have to be there. They're Group 1 winners last season. So we might get to the stage where three weeks out from the race, there's no room to improve. And you might win a Kaikoura Cup and you may not be able to sneak past a horse who's already in the race, for example, like you know the horses who finished one, two, three last week. I think I, think I understand what Canterbury are trying to do. I understand what Addington are trying to do and I respect it. It's very similar to what New South Wales do at the Miracle Mile. You come here and race, you're more chance of getting in the cup, or in fact, more your only chance of getting in the cup. And if that's what it is, just say it. Just say to everybody, the Aussies, the, the Aucklanders, you've got to come down, otherwise you're not going to get in. Because the reality is, 
You could sit three fence, and I've got no concerns about Ultra Meteor being in the cup. He's not a bad horse, or Franco Marek, or of course the winner, who I think is a really good horse. But what we're saying is, if you come to the Canterbury Classic, that form's more important than winning the Holmes DG this week. And if they want to say to people, we want you all at Addington, well, first of all, we're not going to have room to start them all. It was a capacity field last week. And I just believe in my heart of hearts, if this is the best race we have in the country, and one of the best races of any code, is that really a fair way to select it? Don't get me wrong. I want Tack McLeod in the race. I want Frank O'Marrick in the race. I love the romance of it. But it's not about romance. It's about finding the best possible field. It could even get to this stage, guys. It could get to this wild, wild stage. If enough horses won certain lead-up races, Dalton Chards won two. If he had it won and Charlie Brown had won one of those, all of a sudden we lose another spot. We could actually have so many horses qualified for the Cup that by this week, no other horses could get into it. If enough horses who'd won into Dominions and Blacks of Fakes and Auckland Cups and, of course, defending champion Swayze, he's not there. So if all those horses were there, guys, we would be in the situation coming up where the Ashburton Flying Stakes wouldn't matter, the Kaikoura Cup wouldn't matter, and the Methrin Cup wouldn't matter. By all means, give the winner of the Canterbury Classic the respect it deserves and get into the race. But I think having the first three in any race qualifying for our biggest race doesn't make a lot of sense. OK, let's look at it from a different angle, Greg. Are, are, these, are these races in the right place? No, I don't think so, Matthew. I'm absolutely sure that it needs to go back to where it used to be. And I'm advocating for the Canterbury Classic to be 10 days before the Ashburton Flying Stakes. Therefore, we will not end up in the situation where the Methven Cup is in between the Canterbury Classic and then there's another three weeks to the Ashburton Flying Stakes and so now Addington have to run two handicap races which don't carry any group race significance. Therefore, what are they actually worth in terms of those rankings? Michael's right. Um, I think it needs a reshake. I don't think it's anyone's fault. I just think it needs a serious look at. Yeah, so I, 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 don't think, have... I don't think, guys, it's, it, I don't think it's a big drama. I don't think it's, no. it's a disaster for the race. What I'm saying is this is our best race. If we can't get this right, how can we get the myriad of other things we need to get right right? And if we want to say to people, if Addington want to do, because Harness Racing New South Wales do this, they say, you want to go to the Miracle Mile, you got to come to New South Wales. If you don't like it, don't come. Newcastle, lead up races, chariots of fire. If you don't like it, don't come. We'll pick our own field. If you're going to do that, you need to tell people. You need to say to everybody, like a Jason Grimson or the people in Auckland, hey, you know, Vinny, Zinni coming with Lady of the Light, you've got to come down, mate. Your third in, third in the Homes DG is no good to you. And third in the Homes DG to Merlin and Mark Shard is better form than sitting three fence in a Canterbury Classic, but it's of no worth to any horse in New Zealand. And I, I don't think it's fair. If it's not going to be fair and it's home track advantage, let's say it, let's get it out there and let them all come to Canterbury and wore it out down there. We don't sort of want to single out the Canterbury Classic, though, do we? Like, if we're going to have those conversations, you have to bring the Morris Holmes vase into it. Is it still worthy of an automatic entry to the winner? Those sort of conversations. Well, you could essentially, if you follow my lead, uh, the Morris Holmes vase goes where the Avon City Ford was, the Avon City Ford goes where the Canterbury Classic was, and then they all sort of fall into line from there. But, um, yeah, be interesting. It's good discussion, good debate, and I'm sure the, uh, the Addington team will, will have a look at it. But... The goalposts have moved, and I think it's time that we move with them. Yeah, and I guess there's the other side of the conversation as well, where people like to see the smaller stables get their opportunity to get into those sort of races as well, which you have to be respectful of, Greg, but I guess at the end of the day, we're having these conversations and making these decisions for the betterment of the race itself. Is oh, that fair? Definitely. I mean, Ultra Meteor would have probably got into the race anyway. The other two, particularly Franco Marek, um, it's enormous for them. Like, it's, it's, it's a, a huge result for those connections. And I'm looking forward, as Michael says, the romance around that is something special. Michael, stay with us. We'll chat to you very shortly. But right now, it's time to talk Kiang Zahara. But it's all Kiang Zahara. It's put a gap on them and it's going to make it two from two. Looks like a very smart filly. We've seen some impressive performances tonight, but this one's going to take the cake.
Kiang Zahara robbed him. She is a top-notch trotting filly. Look at her go. And Kiang Zahara bolts in. Kiang Zahara swept to the lead. Oh, she put pay to Violet Stanford. Races away. And a new dawn is there with a superstar in the trotting ranks. Well, how about that? He's exceptional is Kiang Zahara and the man with the best seat in the house. Right in behind her is Jason Lee from Victoria. He joins us here on the box seat. Evening to you, Jason. Listening to those calls, does it just give you that little bit of a little bit of a giddy feeling and taking you back to sitting behind her at the races? G'day guys, how are we? Yeah, no, definitely uh, it's uh, nice to watch her coming up the straight and yeah, she's uh, definitely one that gets you excited to go to the stables every day. G'day Jason, uh, great to have you on the box seat. Uh, we're very excited about the slot holders, Richard Cole and uh, Brecken Racing. Ken and Karen Brecken getting involved with you and your family. Tell me about her from day one. Did she show you that X factor and have you been surprised by her rise and how many people are getting in behind her? Yeah, definitely always um, had a bit of X factor about her, uh, Paddy. Um, brother Paddy had a pretty big rap on her even early days and we were pretty lucky we had a, a nice bunch of um, horses that year and Ross Payne actually broke her in and then um, Todd Matthews did a little bit of sort of early work with her um, for a first sort of prep and both of them spoke sort of highly of her you know it's hard to know at that age but they really liked her and she had uh, she had a bit of attitude and it's sort of in the family so it wasn't surprising and she wasn't uh, you know the easiest to get going as in Trotting wise, and that was okay, but just yeah, had a little bit of a uh, little bit of um, little bit of crap in her. Like she was happy to have a kick and sort of um, yeah, lay the boots in and, and be a little bit naughty. So um, yeah, she wasn't um, absolutely you know a delight to drive uh, some days, but obviously uh, all the hard work's paid off. And yeah, she's um, she's pretty easy going now. Made it seven from seven on Saturday night. We're watching her now. When you ask her to go, and you didn't really ask her, you just run the rain over her run. Gee, she accelerates. It must be an incredible feeling. Yeah, definitely. Like um, Saturday night, uh, you know, she did it so easy. I, I, in all honesty, coming back, couldn't believe the the last quarter when I looked at it, and um, you know, we'd sort of made a little bit of a plan yeah we're there to win the race but we didn't want to um sort of have to open her up too much and um you know the guys at home were sort of into me a little bit about uh, you know letting her stride but in all honesty i just didn't think i was going that quick so um yeah she just does it so easy and she was probably a little bit fresh saturday night she was um she had a pretty light sort of 10 days after the the size and hadn't done you know too much just with uh, what's coming up with a busy schedule so, yeah, we are sort of um, going in a little bit underdone, just hoping to get the job done, and, um, yeah, she did it so easy. Yep, she did. She's won a New South Wales Oaks, a New South Wales Derby. When did the New Zealand sort of plan, I suppose? Uh, obviously, you needed someone to, uh, to pick you up in terms of a slot. We're watching you win the Derby uh, here now in New South Wales. Um, the Derby here in the Oaks here... Is, is it an ambition or is it a family ambition to come to New Zealand or was it more about, hey, we've got the right horse to come to New Zealand now? Oh, look, yeah, it's always exciting to travel, you know, interstate, let alone um, overseas with a horse. And obviously the family have been uh, so involved with um, the game for so long and obviously the uncles and uh, mum and, and whatnot have had, you know, um, plenty of years where they've had some really nice ones and probably been you know keen to travel with them but you've got to have the right horse too and um, there's no guarantees but I think you know if we have had the right horse she's definitely um, you know the right candidate to take and have a crack and obviously um, yeah with the the slot race when it was announced it was um, pretty exciting sort of just as the, the game and then to be involved now um, all going well uh, yeah it's definitely uh, pretty exciting for everyone involved. How's it all looking for you logistically? I know you, you're probably still thinking about it, but have you decided where you're going to stay, when you're going to come over? Yeah, still probably working out exactly with the flights. Um, she's obviously got races the next two weeks here. Um, Need for Speed this week, final, and then the Oaks the following week, all going well. Um, that's where she'll head. And then it's looking like the end of this month um, without knowing for sure. Um, obviously, there's going to be a few other Victorians and... 
maybe Australians going over. So, um, yeah, we'll probably try and line up that we get over there a, a little bit early and try and settle in and probably um, try to, to go to Nathan Purden's uh, property where Nate's training out. I've had um, a good relationship with, with Nathan and Mark uh, over the years and uh, great people and great facilities and uh, obviously um, a straight track there. It'd be, be good to be able to train her on, which is similar to sort of what she's used to at home. You've already got 20 Group 1 winners to your name. What would it mean to you and your family to come over to New Zealand, come to Addington, headquarters here in our country, and do the business with your staff, Ellie? Oh, look, it's, yeah, it's easy to get a, ahead of ourselves, um, you know, and, you know, you can start to sort of thinking best-case scenario, but we're just really looking excited, excited and, and forward to, you know, travelling with her and, having a crack, you, you can't win them at home. So, um, yeah, the only way you can you can go and uh, make this happen is, you know, put her on the plane and, and go and have a crack. And we think she's good enough, you know, all going well. Sometimes things don't go to plan. And obviously there's some really, you know, nice horses over there. And um, I was uh, just talking to Brad rang me the other day, Brad Williamson, to give me a bit of stick because good mates, done a few driving things together. And obviously they got a really good one and there's plenty of others there that can uh, really motor. So um, it's going to be, yeah, not easy going, but we think we've got a horse that's good enough to go and definitely be competitive. Well, we can't wait for her to be coming over and we look forward to having a chat to you about her closer to the time. But uh, as of tonight, Jason, thanks for your time and, and good luck and, and happy travels when you come over. No worries. Cheers, guys. Uh, yeah, can't wait to get over there. Thanks. The ultimate professional. Then, as I said, Greg, he's got the best seat in the house. And they've had some very good horses, Matthew, over the years. Uh, Jellybee Kung Fu finished second in My Field Marshall's Miracle Mile. So they know their way around a good horse. They're farmers. That's what their, their main uh, sort of income is. But, gee, you could tell they love their horse and they certainly love her. We'll be previewing some more races coming up here on the box seat. But, Greg, as we uh, head to, the, to a break, you touched on it briefly last week, but the, the very sad passing of... Uh, Denise Swain last week. Yeah, look, an outstanding horsewoman. Uh, she had many good horses. I remember at Addington back in the mid-90s, uh, she won the Superstars, which uh, she beat Alva Colo, and it was a night we had a million-dollar pick six here with the Orator. Here was uh, one of her best days at the races, though, and she didn't win. Here's Alva Colo in the cup. Have a look for the horse with the uh, yellow and white breastplate about to come through the middle. John Hay drove many winners for her, over 50 and uh, just Royce this was charging home. She also trained Clancy. Uh, her uh, nephew is Aaron Swain. I spoke to Aaron. He said um, she was his mentor. Uh, Aaron's doing a very good job with, uh, with his small team. And um, she was a very good horsewoman, uh, respected by all. And I was really sad to hear of her passing. Yep, as we all are here at Trackside, as we head to a break here on the box seats, do stick around after this. We'll be taking you north and having a preview of the Homes DG. Ricky Bachelor in front of, from there on the outside, Durham Dell, then back on the rails next to Rule the Roost, and that's the way they cross the liner. Clancy's got the run along the inside. Blossom Lady, Clancy coming after it. So too Mark Hanover and wider out the Tartan Clansman. Clancy in front, Mark Hanover, Tartan Clansman. Clancy got the run through on the inside and has won the Hannon Memorial. Sire stakes heat to plenty on Thursday night at Addington. The Holmes DG at Alexandra Park. A Wyndham Twilight into Friday Night Lights. Sunday, the Group 3 Lazarus Methvin Cup. Can American Me defend his title? And next week, our Tuesday night out of the bridge. Greg, I had a few obsessions in the late 90s, early 2000s, and one of those horses was Holmes DG, along with the likes of Yule Star, Home and Hosed, Christian Cullen, all of those types. Lyle Creek rolled along, but it's great to see a race named in the honour of one of the toughest horses that I've ever seen, the Holmes DG. Four derbies. 
yet. Mm. So he couldn't quite get to, obviously, the great horse, Courage Hunter Fires. But I'll tell you what, four derbies was a, a pretty big effort. Uh, Merlin favourite here, 225 here, and Mark Shard both off 20 metres here. All in the Holmes DG colours too. Yes, they are. Uh, what a great horse, the Holmes DG uh, a brilliant racehorse, uh, of course, Miracle Mile winner. Michael uh, Merlin, big difference here this week, 2,700 for mine. Yeah, it's the uh, same handicap, Greg, off 20 metres, but of course last time was 2,200, and he probably never really had a chance of winning because they stepped and ran. It looks too simple, doesn't it? Because you think an extra 500, he's such a great horse, he should just win, and he probably will, but there are a few moving parts to this. If you put sooner the better, in the trail behind Lady of the Light, and he just sits there and does nothing. And Merlin's got to come three wide. Greg, it's, it's not as easy as just running straight past him. And I thought Mark Shard was really, really good last time. And he's been really good for the majority of 2024. So I know it's really easy to think Merlin will win this. And I do think he's the best pacer in New Zealand. But when you watch this, just put this blueprint over this week. Say they're all sitting at exactly the same place at the top of the straight. Well, the sooner the better is that far in front of Merlin. Why does he run past him over 2,700 if he couldn't run past him over 22? He's my top pick. He's everybody's top pick. But this is still a lead-up race. I think he'll win. I don't really want to take 225 to find out. This has been a banana peel of a race for a lot of very good horses for a long time. So I do think Merlin's the best horse in the country, Greg. I think he's the best horse in this race, but I think this race is a lot trickier than it looks. The Kerry Hoggard Memorial Homes DG will be race number six on Friday, tab.co.nz. You can bet into that. We turn the page now and take a look at the Dunstan Horse Feed Sire Stakes. Two-year-old Phillies heat number three, Greg, and B-Tastic obviously highlighted with her victory last week in the Group 1 Caduceus Club. You're getting $8 for her this yeah, week. Yeah, came from last, swept down the outside. Brilliant performance from her. You're The one that I want is the one the punters want and the one the bookmakers uh, have settled on here. Of course, the winner uh, of the Delightful Lady, second in the Cardigan Bay. Uh, she's a, a really good filly. I, I can't wait to see her. She's trialled nicely behind the Big Lebowski. Mantra Blue was in that trial too. Uh, here's B-Tastic getting to the outside and storming home, but yeah, I think you're the one that I want is the one I want to be on all season. Michael, are you in the same boat? Uh, I am. It's hard to believe a horse who went this good is paying $8 anyway, because it was absolutely superb. A couple of bits out of that race, Oh, Sandra D was a bit unlucky, so it was hot and dangerous, and um, so it was always be Misty who heads to Addington. So no disrespect to be Tastic, but the only time the favourite's been beaten was by Cyclone Geordie, who may have been our best two-year-old until he was sold to Australia and since gone on to really good form at Gloucester Park, in fact, winning their Golden Slipper last week. So I think she's a very, very good filly. Hot and Dangerous had no luck last week and she is very tight to her in the market. As I say to people all the time, I don't want to back horses who are fresh against horses who have race fitness, but this could be a very good filly. A dollar eighty is close enough to the mark, fellas. It really is. But when you've got a market with a dollar eighty and two dollars twenty, that's a hundred percent of the market. So one of these will drift, and I would suggest that will be hot and dangerous. Greg, there's a few ways you can get a headache. Big weekend on the Groggle Dirt. A late night at work. <laughs> a late night at work. No Done water. Done that a couple of times. And trying to work out heat two of the Dunstan size stakes at Addington. It is not easy at Far all. Out. Let's have a look at this because a number of Stonewall runners, uh, a few couple from Duns, Stella Rouge, one that we both really liked off the back of her first up run. He had a hard run. Uh, that was her first career run. Her first up run this time in was not easy. She's got barrier one. Music Mistress really interests me. Smart, smart filly back here. Gate speed, I reckon she'll go forward. $5 a fair price for her. Always be Misty, was superb in her first two wins. There's Gone Surfing, who I spoke to John Dunn about today. He said, I wasn't that disappointed. I probably asked a bit much of her last time. Michael, can you help us out here? Because this race is an almighty head scratcher. I think Always Be Misty is the most talented of the northern ones coming down. So she's behind Hot and Dangerous, basically three back, well, three. Three back, one out. And she comes out here and she can't get a gap. She then goes across late in the piece. So you're looking for the horse. There's David Butcher's yellow cap. It comes across its heels. 
Now, she doesn't savage the line, and she's not great after the line, but she also wasn't driven out and never got a chance to be driven out. There's a very good chance here that one of her stable mates, like Music Mistress, could lead and hand up to her, and that makes her the horse to beat. I think we've got an amazing night of racing at Addington with a lot of really close two- and three-year-olds who don't have much between them, trotters, paces, boys and girls. And I think most of those races are going to be won by the horse who has the favours. They have the opportunity to create a lead trail scenario for those two horses. And it would take a very good horse to run past them both, I think. I think Blair Orange might have something to say about the, the early tactics, Greg, on a horse like Orlets. Does he push the button and try and get handy with her? She was good last time. Yeah, she is, and she's really talented. So, yeah, I reckon he'll go forward. We know that Blair likes to mm. be up and in with these uh, babies, and I, I think that's exactly what he'll do here. And the Hayden Cullen pair, why can they not run one-two again? Well, one light was, was excellent. Um, has to come off the second row. It's not going to be easy. Uh, but, yeah, no reason why the, his team is low-flying at the oh, moment. I'm happy to go Stella Rouge again after the way that we saw her trial. The trial was just too good not to like her. First up, did a bit of work, faded, but I think we can well and truly put a line through that. We move over to the two-year-old boys now. Woodland Stud size stakes. Marketplace has the outside draw here. 350 the favourite. Got the chocolates, Rubera second row. Yeah, of course he's drawn eight because he's already won a heat and there's a real challenge on for spots in the size stakes on Cup Day uh, because there's not that many heats. So it's blimmin' hard to get into. You've got to finish in the top two to guarantee your spot. Got the chocolates, has already secured that. Spoke to John about him today. He said, I'm really happy with him. $5.50, I think that's a pretty fair sort of price. Um, $3.40 about Ribera. I reckon there'll be heaps of moves in this race, Michael. I think all of them know how difficult it's going to be to get into the final on Cup Day, and there's a heap of horses to look at here. Well, I think there's two different types of horses in this race. Some of these horses are in the final. The horse in front here, got the chocolates, is in the final. Marketplace is in the final. They don't need to win this week. Now, sure, they want to win, but if they're getting a headache with a 1,000 to go, they don't need to give themselves more of a headache. If things don't go well early, if the all the horses inside Marketplace charge out at the start, they can change their plan and go back to, to midfield or even to last. So whenever I look at sire stakes, I think, what are you trying to achieve? And some of these horses are trying to achieve different things to other horses. Don't get me wrong, everybody's out there to win. But when you're qualified, you don't need to give your horse a headache this week because you have other races coming up. I think the most interesting horse in the race is Ribera because we're so used to those Purden horses, Matt, being really dominant and being the superstar two-year-olds. And Ribera has that sort of form line but I'm just not sure how good he is. I think he's going to tell us in the next month he might need to step up a bit more, but the fact that so many good horses, including Bar Louie, are drawn the second line, this is a fascinating race. And uh, I think driver intent, for example, if Marketplace, they push the button at the start and it crosses them to lead, the complexion of this race is vastly different that if Master Place goes back to last. So I think it's a really interesting race, and that's why it's great to have presenters back on track. We can send people out to ask those questions to try and give that information to the punters. You'd be thinking someone like a Tactiva might be pushing the button at the start. And he's a really nice mm. horse. He led, of course, uh, the race down at Awamaru behind Ribera, was brave in second. I reckon he'll be having a decent look at the lead here. Um, it's a deep, deep crop. Captain Sampson's impressed Captain me up Sampson's north. Captain six fifty. He's a nice horse. Mm. He really is. Michael, what do you make of him? Very big and very fast. Um, I, I think it's a very even crop, and we're going to see a lot more of this because we used to have these horses race for three or four months, and then we sort of knew who they were. By May, we knew who the best one was. Now we have them race in two separate crops, North Island, South Island, and they don't really get together to the end of the year. I think it's really good and it's really interesting and I think in many ways Thursday night at Addington is moving night. A lot of these horses who you think are players for these races aren't going to feel like it on Friday morning. So I think a lot of those slots for races like the Velocity are going to start to come into play now and people are going to say, if this horse goes good this week, I like him. If it doesn't go good this week, I don't like him. I think it's a, a fascinating Thursday night, uh, even though Greg, I'm Still a little bit surprised that it's on Thursday night with Friday night lights on, but I know there's reasons for that. Evolving sponsors, I get it, but it's it does gonna feel kind of like Friday night 
light rather than Friday night lights. I don't think it'll be happening again, Michael. So we'll mm. just probably leave that one there. I was going to enjoy Friday, <laughs> Friday night off. <laughs> Were you? It's not about yeah, you, Matthew. Nicely. We don't run the industry for you, It's Matthew. all about you, Matthew. Yeah, yes. exactly. <laughs> Have you, just, have you just figured that out? No, the hey, old blokes have Matt, spoken. Yeah. Matt, after your, right, pro moving after, on. after your promo attempt last week, I want to be getting too cocky about your career. Uh, we were just trying to turn the channel into a comedy channel, Michael. Thank you. <laughs> uh, treacherous baby, heat number six of the Neverly Art three-year-old Philly series should appreciate a, an upgrade in barrier draws, Scrig. Yeah, I think so. Uh, excellent she was in one of the conditioned heats, 380 into 320. That was pretty much as a result of the scratching of Queen of Swords. A uh, couple of really nice horses in this. Rick Law's Dreams won. Shakira goes very well. Obviously, the Group 1 winner, All You Need Is Me. Inside second row now, though, for her. Crucial with the scratching coming out. And Louis Girl hit the line strongly at Awamaru as well. Come on, Michael, hit us. Well, it, it, it looks a pretty easy race to bet into. If we're thinking Treacherous Baby is going to lead, and I asked Nathan Purden that question today for the preview for HRNZ, he said, yep, she's got gate speed, she'll be leading and all you need is me is on her back, well then, if you spend $20 when you bet, you back them both for $10. And you've probably got about an 85% chance of getting back either $34 or $36 or whatever they are. So in a race like this, if you genuinely think Treacherous Baby is going to lead, you back them both, you sit there, and then they put the money back in your account with interest on it about five minutes later. I don't know if all you need is me could out sprint it. No. I think she could out tough her mm. eventually, but if Treacherous Baby led, she's fast, pinched it, I don't know that all you need is me could pick her up. Yep, I agree. Maybe a better horse. But no, I absolutely anyway. agree. Hey, Oscar's back. Oscar is back. Looking forward to it. 35 metres. Has a phenomenal fresh up record. Eight goes, five yeah. wins fresh up. Yeah. No. He'll just be hoping that they don't, something doesn't rip out and run a 316, 317 lead time. Could make it tough. The DG Jones winner, Mr. Love, is there. Kai Valley Hotspur was third in that race. Mystic Max back. So, And I spoke to Phil Williamson today. He said, I'm expecting a better run from Love in the Port. And Johnny Dunn's given Tim the heave-ho off Mighty Logan. Mm. Jump back on. Mm. 440. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Might have something to say about that. Uh, anyway, that'll be race number 11, the Brecon Farms Handicap Trot there on Thursday night that it is. We have a 12 race car taking us right through until nine minutes after 10. Methven, Sunday. Methven Cup Day, and we've got the Punters Club there as well with a pretty decent prize on offer, Greg. Yeah, total uh, 5,000 there for you. The first, second and third all get an entry into the Show Day Punters competition. Entain TAB getting in behind that. Uh, they're putting together a terrific day there. You just need to go to the Methven Trotting Club and send them a message and tell them that you want to be part of it, and you can be. Yeah, well, I got that much of a headache doing the Addington form today. I might just give it a day or two before we jump about into this race? To Methven. Pinseek, a good horse, very good horse. 3.40 into $3. You can see why. Mossdale Ben was excellent on the clock in the Canterbury Classic. So was Franco Sinatra. Smoke on the Waters had absolutely nothing go his way. And American Me probably needs to just sharpen up a length or two. Yeah, I thought and this horse the... needs to learn how to step properly, BD yep. Joe. I thought Smoke on the Water was really good at mm. Oamaru and has a great grass track record. I reckon it's an each way play. If BD Joe paced away and kept pacing, he's the best horse in the race, credential no wise. He's still running phenomenal splits on the clock. I'd just love to, to see him get it right. But they have a, an 11 race program there on Sunday 12.20 and you'll be on course as yep, well. Looking forward to that, Matthew. There's uh, some excellent harness racing at both venues uh, this week, so I can't wait to get into it. As there is at Melton on Saturday night, the smoking up sprint for $50,000 and it features a pretty tidy field as well there from Victoria. And uh, here it is, you've got Catch a Wave who has Barrier 2. The ex Kiwi can't find a better man, Mac Dan, Captain Ravishing and Leap to Fame. Yep, there's a terrific field and I think Leap to Fame will keep on winning. Best bets for me, I'm going to go Treacherous Baby. I reckon from that draw, I'm with you. I don't think all you need is me can out sprinter. I think she'll win. Can we ask Michael for his or? Yep. Yeah, we should. Michael. It's been a bad Come run, in. boys, but uh, I backed father. I backed and tipped Father Barry two weeks ago and I tripped him up at the start. If he gets it right this week, I'll tell you what I'll do. I won't back him to give him a fair chance. So he's got a chance of winning and the big fish is going...
for the big pacer, Merlin, the big chunky superstar from the north to win the Holmes DG boys. So that's the ones for the north, Father Barry and Merlin. And you're with Vesem, Matt, just a quick one on Vesem. Spoke to Nathan Purden today. He said we may drive him conservatively and we don't want to see him pit around the field and sitting parked. He has a $100,000 race next week. So just a word of warning there for your bestie, my little bestie. Well, thank you, Michael. Will you be back in seven days' time? Uh, if I don't get arrested in Singapore, yes, there's a very good chance I'll be on the show. Oh, well, you will definitely won't be back in seven days' time. <laughs> well, thank you very again. much. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think that Vesson's going to have too many options other than to sit back and run on with the gate speed that is drawn inside of him. Greg? Yep. Awesome. Good luck over the week. Yeah, looking forward to Thursday night, Friday night lights, of course, with uh, the Kerry Hog up, the Holmes DG, and Sunday at Methven. It's going to be fun. Friday night lights on a Thursday night too. Don't forget that. That's been your box seat for another week. See you in seven days.